For those of you who have classes with me this fall 2021 semester, I want to talk about a few technologies and a few strategies that I think you'll find useful in not only searching for terms, but also looking for their meaning. I think some of these tools and strategies that I want to share with you here today will also help you in other classes, classes that you're currently taking perhaps, maybe even some classes that you take in the future as you progress throughout the BA in English language teaching. So the first thing I want to share with you is a search engine called DuckDuckGo, and this is an alternative to Google. It offers a private search engine, okay, but I think even more importantly than that, it offers what's called bangs. It offers a way to streamline how you search for information. So let me give you a few examples. Let's say that I want to search for the term linguistics. And I want to look for this term in a variety of websites. I want to check Wikipedia. I want to maybe check on YouTube. Maybe I'll check Google, Google Scholar. And maybe I want to check Microsoft Academic. Okay, all using the same search term, linguistics. So DuckDuckGo has what's called bangs. And to activate a bang, we start in the URL bar up at the top. So we start with an exclamation mark, and I'm going to type in W and then space, and then I'm going to type in the word linguistics. So the bang, this is what DuckDuckGo calls uh, bangs. The bang in this case is trying to search a term in Wikipedia, and we're going to use the bang exclamation mark W. So notice now I'm in the DuckDuckGo web page, and when I select enter, it's going to provide automatically directly in Wikipedia the results for that search term. So it just saves one step of having to first go to Wikipedia, the page, and then within the page, do the search. It takes you directly to that page. So I'm in Wikipedia now. I want to now search YouTube for the word linguistics. So I'm going to use the bang exclamation mark YT for YouTube. And it again provides me the results directly within YouTube without having first need uh, without having to go first to the uh, page or the website YouTube. Now I'm going to do the same in Google Scholar. I'm going to type exclamation mark Scholar. Notice there's no space between any of the uh, the bangs between the exclamation mark and the the code that we're using for the bang. I'm going to use the bang for uh, Google Scholar, and this gives me now the uh, results. We'll try one more. Academic or Microsoft Academic is MSA, exclamation mark, MSA space, and then the search term, linguistics. And again, it provides me the results for the search directly in the page, Microsoft Academic. So I really like bangs in DuckDuckGo. I, it's one of the main reasons why I use it. You know, if you just do a regular search in DuckDuckGo, it's going to give you a lot of good options as well. I, I really like the fact that it, by default, along the right-hand side of your screen, most of the time it will provide a Wikipedia uh, result just automatically, in addition to regular uh, just other search results. But it's a, it's a very good search engine, of course, like um, like Google. You have options to select images and videos and news, maps, and also a definition, all right, for the search terms. So, again, it's very versatile, but, again, the bangs, I save a lot of time using bangs on a, on a daily basis. Now, if you want to search the different bangs, you can type in, do a search for DuckDuckGo bangs, and that will produce the first result here where you can go in and see they have over 1,300 different bangs available. So if you go here, you'll see they have bangs for Amazon, of course, Wikipedia, Twitter, Reddit, Steam, and so on. Notice they have categories as well and subcategories. Right? And you can find a list of many, many different bangs. And as you learn and become familiar with the bangs that are 
uh, most useful for you, it really does streamline the search process. Now, what I would do is I would combine using DuckDuckGo with doing a Boolean search. So I would use a Boolean search in addition to using DuckDuckGo and the bangs and using the different operators that are available for doing a Boolean search like and, or, not, and near. Remember that Boolean search operators require that the operator itself be all in uppercase lettering. You can also use these operators of uh, the operators and and not. You can also use the symbols, the plus sign and the minus sign to simplify. So I think again, a combination of the Boolean search operators and using DuckDuckGo bangs specifically, uh, I think that'll help you a lot in, in narrowing down your searches. Now, if you're looking for text within context, let's say you're looking for the word linguistics and you want to see an example of this word, but within a context, then I would suggest that you use corpus of contemporary American English. So when you search a term, in this case, it gives you the frequency, but more importantly, when you click on this link, it will provide real life examples of text where this term that you're searching has been used. Okay, these are authentic texts, and this will give you a good idea about how the term is used in a real authentic uh, way. All right, so I, I like the corpus of contemporary American English. There are many uh, different types of corpus that are available online that you can use. This is one that I use quite frequently. I think Google also has one if you want to search uh, and take a look at the American, I use the American uh, corpus because it has more, it has a lot more uh, words available to you. Uh, but this is another option here. So I'm showing on my screen. This gives you a good way to search in Google, right, the uh, examples of the term. It's a little bit different uh, of a layout. It goes directly to Google Books. Uh, but again, it's very useful, and you can go in and see examples of a text being used, um, you know, for the search term that you're using. All right, let's say that you want to see frequency of a particular word. Let's say that I have a question about whether or not the word keyword is one word or two words. So I'm going to use the bang for Google Trends. So that's exclamation mark, the word trends. Remember, there's no space between the exclamation mark and whatever word or code or abbreviation that is part of the bang. So in this case, again, exclamation mark, trends, all together, space, and then the key, and then the search word, which in this case is keyword. And I'm gonna write keyword as one word because again, I'm. let's say I have a question about whether or not I should write Keyword is one word or two. So I put in the search term. Notice again, it goes directly to Google Trends and it shows a graph of uh, the frequency, the historical frequency of this term keyword as one word. But now I'm going to compare this and I'm going to type in here keyword as two words. And you'll see here that the frequency, it's more common, keyword is one word. Now, what I would also do, I would combine this site, Google Trends, and I would also define keyword. I'm going to put keyword as one word. And notice here that in DuckDuckGo, it automatically provides the definition at the very top by default. So anytime you type in the word define and then any word that you want a definition for, it will provide you a quick definition at the top. And this is nice because you don't have to go into a separate website to find the meeting. But in this case, I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to go to dictionary.com because I want to get further information about this. And notice here that it says keyword or as one word and then or it's keyword as two words. So we see here that yes, both are accepted. Even the definition though, it looks like it's best to write it as one word. And we can cross-reference that using Google Trends to say, oh, yes, in fact, 
keyword is one word is more frequent, it's more common. And this will help us, I think, make a decision about whether we're going to use the word or write it out as one word or two words. Okay, so again, I would combine Google Trends with a dictionary of your choice, an online dictionary, so that you can cross-reference and try to find the um, try to find the best answer to your question. Let's say that you're looking at phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are very difficult in English. They're idiomatic, so a lot of times we have a hard time knowing whether or not we use one particle over the other. Remember, a phrasal verb has a verb and a particle. A particle, it looks like a preposition. It's technically not a, not a preposition. It's not really functioning as a preposition, but it's actually part of the verb. So let's say that we have a question about whether or not the phrasal verb catch up is correct. We don't know if it's catch up or catch around. So again, I'm in Google Trends, and I want to do a comparison between these two phrasal verbs, catch up and catch around. We have a question. We're not sure which particle is correct. So we just want to see frequency to see if this, in fact, will give us any, any ideas. Now, in this particular case, it's the, I think the decision here is pretty easy because catch around is, um, you know, it's not used virtually at all, and catch up is used quite a bit. Now, if we need to, though, we can take it a step further, and we can also define, again, I'm going to go to my DuckDuckGo search. I'm going to type in the word define space, and then I'm going to type in catch up as two words. So we have catch up two words, phrasal verb, and it gives us the definition, and we can say, okay, I think this is what I, what I want. This is the verb, the phrasal verb that I need. I see the definition here. This is what I need. Um, so again, it's a little bit obvious in this example. It's less, op op it's less obvious when you have two different uh, phrasal verbs that are actually, that exist, but maybe have slightly different uh, meanings. Let's use the example back up as two words and back down, All right? So if we compare these two phrasal verbs, the frequency is really not going to help us, perhaps. Um, it, you know, it, it shows here that they're, they're both used, one's used more than the other, but it really is not the point in this particular case. We can say, okay, probably both are phrasal verbs, like they both exist, but maybe they have two different meanings. So, we can still go to the definition or our dictionary and we can define each term back up and we can see the definition for back up okay that's what that means and you can say back down and you can see the definition for that all right so you can then compare these and say okay which one do i actually need which phrasal verb do i need so for clarification you can look those up. You can see that they both exist. And again, trying to combine Google Trends with a dictionary definition, I think together will help you uh, make some decisions about, in this case, which phrasal verbs that you need to use. All right, so I hope this helps. I wanted to share with you today a few tips and some strategies, how you can go about finding key terms. I think this is going to be very helpful when you're especially looking for academic articles and you're even looking and combining different key terms. Maybe you're looking for research topics that you're trying to narrow down your topic. So again, combining the bullying search with DuckDuckGo and using those bangs to jump around different websites to try to get information, I think can be helpful. I am a, a proponent of using Wikipedia for for finding general ideas and trying to narrow down your topic. A lot of times academic article, articles can be found at the bottom of a Wikipedia page and that will direct you to other articles as you, as you kind of find your way through the, the, uh, the inquiry process looking for different topics. Try to check out uh, Google Trends for frequency. Try to find corpus websites that help you uh, see different language in text and uh, of course use uh, online dictionaries and especially ones that have mobile apps on your phone so that you always have a dictionary available that you can use to not only look up words but also save or favorite those words so that you can create lists 
of words that you can uh, you can uh, bring into your own day to day vocabulary. I like Dictionary.com. It has a nice uh, mobile app that I use quite frequently. And for that purpose of saving those words onto your own list, I think, and later creating activities with those new vocabulary words, I think is, is good practice. So I hope this helps, guys. If you have any questions or issues with these technologies and strategies that I'm sharing with you here today, feel free to reach out to me. You can send me a chat in Microsoft Teams if you have any uh, questions.